Nathan Mallory, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet Thank you, you for well. welcoming us into Brookline. Brookline, yeah. Tell me what is the fabulous thing about uh, Brookline? What do you think is so fabulous? <laughs> what is fabulous? Uh, mostly the people. You know, really? with, with us, it's uh, it goes off of, you know, we're a diverse neighborhood. We have a lot of, uh, you know, the restaurants, the business district, the, the housing stock, um, the values of the homes, the... You know, just the quality of life, the amenities that, ha that we have here in Brookline are um, really kind of what makes it home. Uh, it's like you live in the city of Pittsburgh and me coming from small, small town up north, um, my dad's a dairy farmer. So when oh, us beautiful. us growing, you know, when my family comes here, they're telling me, oh, yeah, I can't believe you live in the city. And, uh, you know, how, what's it like living in the city? And it's but when you come to Brookline, it doesn't really feel like you live in the city. Oh, it's it's kind of like you live in a small town. So, right. you know, it's the south hills of Pittsburgh. So we end up, uh, you know, we're, we're a drive away from anything. But mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, being on this side of the hill, it's kind of a nice, quaint um it's a nice neighborhood. It is. It seems very family oriented. It is. Um, we it are is. like here at this, the uh, City Parks Rec Center, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's like early in the morning, and we still have kids lots of and people. parents. And they do. Uh, the p director of this um, rec center, we have baseball teams, football teams. Uh, in the summertime, um, we do live music. I own the coffee shop up on Brookline Boulevard, oh, and yeah. um, in the summertime, first first Wednesday of every month, we'll bring like a whole group of people down, and we'll set up open mic night in the park. So we'll do it outside for everybody to kind of participate and everybody to kind of see what goes on. And once you start, you know, the neighborhood, once you start kind of interconnecting the groups of people, you know, with you know, the moms with kids, with the kids that hang out at the coffee shop, then all of a sudden, you know, it just kind of adds to that. that walk yeah. and you start seeing generations. <laughs> yeah. and it adds to, uh, it kind of gives you that, community. it makes it feel like home. Yeah, yeah you know, that's so. beautiful. And we can, we, we managed to do it pretty quick, you know, like I moved here f six years ago now. And uh, for me to move here and not really, I don't have kids, you know, so for me to move here and then kind of get into the groove of things, um, it's you know, the work and home thing is pretty easy, you know, but to actually be able to get out and get into the community yeah. and then be involved in the community is kind of a neat. Well, you, you, are, you are extremely, I mean, you are Superman. Oh, we just need to put a big S on your chest. <laughs> no. Tell well, me about some of the things that you're involved in in the community. And, and uh, the well, we, and... there's a lot of people I sit around tables with um, in this neighborhood as far as uh, people that are trying to make the community a better place. Um, some of the groups that I'm with is uh, South Pittsburgh Development Corporation, um, which some of their projects involve uh, a property, um, owning property, and uh, basically neighborhood cleanups and revitalization. They're a 501c3, so they can sanction grant money and stuff. Um, then I'm with uh, Vice President of Brookline Chamber of Commerce. I work with Brookline Christian Ministerium, so we help with um, kind of shared resourcing amongst the congregations to do uh, Brookline Christian Food Pantry, Brookline Meals on Wheels, you know, so, and then... Uh, my obscure one is uh, with Bird Bees, which is Pittsburgh's Urban Beekeepers, um, which is and you're in my neighborhood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we end up so we end up get the opportunity to you know not only do like the traditional kind of things to keep people going, it's also neat to be involved in something like that. That's like kind of an obscure uh, amenity to the community. So you get to get out there and start talking to people about how um, how that can help. You know what. You know, when you have a conversation about honeybees, uh, it's like, why, why my neighborhood? Why, why do we need this? And it's kind of neat because you get the opportunity to get the community out, to get to have, and start having the conversation. And that's mm. what's kind of fun about it is just starting the conversation, whether or not, um, you know, somebody agrees or disagrees. Just having that conversation is kind of fun. Once the dialogue starts, yep. things happen. Yep, that's wonderful. It is. And uh, so, what would you what, what would you change about Brookline? Oh. What would I change about Brookline? If there were a negative, what would you say? Uh, a lot of it is, if there was a negative to Brookline, um, I own the coffee shop up on the boulevard, so the the small the business district is a Main Street's business district, so um, we have a lot of amenities, but we don't have them all. Um, I think a lot of it for me is, you know, we have a tremendous business district, so I wouldn't, you know, and what's nice about that is they're all independently owned. So, you know, they're small business, you know, small shops. Are they accessible? Shops. They are. Parking? And... Well, if, if you, if I could say, yeah, and that would be my lead in is our bus service. You know, our public transportation mm -hmm. in Brookline is really, 
um, limiting uh, a lot of developmental opportunities as far as people living in our community that don't drive. Um, we have one bus. Uh, you know, we're a really big neighborhood. I would guess we're probably about fourth now with the last census, fourth largest neighborhood in the wow. city. Um, I think Oakland beat us and Shadyside beat us the last and, census. And, and those two ah. neighborhoods are kind of transient, so yeah, yeah. You don't, they're not yeah. like a community where you really yeah. do yeah. need a regular... Yep, and most of our, you know, most of Brookline are also homeowners. Um, we do have some rental property, um, but with it being, you know, what's what's kind of neat about that is like, you know, we have a lot of stakeholders because mm. people are raising their families in Brookline, and without public transit, it's hard to appeal to the the new people. You right. know, it's hard to convince. You know, you can walk through Brookline and you can talk. You know, you can see people and talk to people and meet people, and they'll tell you everything about what's awesome about Brookline. But the end up, it always ends up being like, well, how far away is it to the closest bus? And then with the yeah, the buses seem to be the hardest part for Brookline. I'm glad you said so. that. <laughs> you know, I, I think that that's you know, you've got this vibrant neighborhood, and you you probably people would come and visit this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love your. Your your business street is yeah. awesome, but can you get here? Yeah, well, on no public transit. Public transit is tough. Um, you know, and we have said what's neat about it too is we have an organization called Berg Bits and Bites. It's uh, Pittsburgh's food tour. Um, it's ran out of uh, ran by a lady that lives. I don't know where she lives, but she does a food tour here. Um, in Brookline, and they go and they start at Pita Land, and they get the opportunity to see the pitas being made, and they go from Pita Land to you know the Egyptian restaurant to the Italian mm. restaurant to the pizza shops to the coffee shops, and the people. Mm. So we end up having all of this like people are coming from all over the city and all over the state, and actually coming to hang out in Brookline to come and see you know try our food, and it's because we do have such a ethnic diversity as far as food goes. So. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's what does that reflect the neighborhoods as well? It does. Where do you see Brookline in 25 years? Uh, it's definitely going to be, you know, with, um, we're going to be just fine. All you know, right. as far as, because <laughs> we do, I, in my opinion, we do it right. Um, because the people at the table are people that are invested in the community. And, um, you know, public transit is definitely an issue. Our parks, uh, we have we have two parks in our neighborhood, um, this being Brookline Park, and we have Moore Park, um, you know, and they're constantly getting a little bit of money here and there to make it, you know, to uh, basically renegotiate their, their stake in the community, and they do a phenomenal job. Um, you know, I think it's catching on, you know, the, on. What, what Brookline is is finally catching on, you know, That's and it is a South Hills neighborhood. Uh, we have you know, tremendous uh, presence at city council where, you know, we're all, uh, I feel acknowledged, put it that way, you know, with me being just a resident and I live in Brookline, I own a business on the business district. Um, you know, it's a great city to live in and then Brookline as a neighborhood is a great neighborhood, so. If you were to, uh, if, if another neighborhood in Pittsburgh inspired you, um, what neighborhood would that be and why? Uh, there's a lot of things going on um, for me, Mount Washington is really impressive, uh, with Mount Washington Community Development, um, mm -hmm. committee, uh, corporation, they, with Emerald View Park and the things that they've done, like, that's kind of a, they did it themselves, and that's kind of what, you know, with this community and the boards I sit on, um, it's neat to see that they built their capacity solo, you know, external mm -hmm. to, you know, they have support from the city, but, like, that idea and that energy came from that neighborhood. Came from the heart of the neighborhood. Yeah, right. and I think the, um, you know, so Mount Washington, and they have their challenges just like we do, but, you know, that's kind of a really neat, they've kind of done their own renaissance. Well, um, I was going to ask you about some of your local heroes, but actually I think you're a local hero, you know. I mean, to me nowadays, a real hero is usually unsung. You know, those people that you see in the neighborhood are working and working and working, but nobody knows, you know. Yeah. yeah. What are some of your local landmarks, though? Uh, for Brookline? Um, when people, as far as landmarks, of course, if you're, you know, is going to be this rec center, um, you know, to come down here and hang out and get the opportunity, you know, to meet Mickey. She's, like I mentioned before, she's like pretty much raised half this neighborhood. Yes, uh, Mama Brookline. Um, Mama Brookline. <laughs> she is. She's Mama Brookline. You know, so what ends up, what's kind of neat about, you know, so I would say the rec center is definitely a landmark. Um, you know, the uh, the pool at Moore Park is something that's oh, nice. I've heard about um, that. You know, so we end up having, 
you know, we don't, you know, there's no glamour. Well, that was, that's not really, but there's, you know, there's no glamorous, like, this is what you have to see when you come to Brookline. Right. It's more so just hang out, you know, come and to Brookline and just meet the people, you know, Feel shake hands and, you know, talk to the neighbors. And, and that's really what, uh, you know, it's uh, the nicest people you'll ever meet, you know, is kind of the Brookline charm. I'm going to wrap up with you, but I yep. want you to talk to me about your bees. <laughs> oh. Well, we went uh, with South Pittsburgh Development Corporation. We have a property on the corner of Jacob and Whited. It's a one acre piece of land that we hold lease to with the city of Pittsburgh. And we've basically had it for about five years ish and we don't really know what to do with it. So we go and mow it once in a while. Um, and then that's about it. You know, we put a welcome to Brookline sign on the corner. It looks really nice. And then uh, went from that to, okay, now what are we going to do with this? And then came up with the idea of um, Berg Bees, which is Pittsburgh's urban beekeepers um, doing sustainable agriculture within the city and surrounding areas. And uh, I was like, hey, that might be something that, you know, could work there. So I approached their board of directors um, and as kind of like the representative for South Pittsburgh Development Corporation. And then all of a sudden it was like, hey, this is kind of neat. So I started going to volunteer work days at the apiary in Homewood um, and then kind of hanging out with beekeepers. And then all of a sudden I became a beekeeper. And now we ended up, uh, you know, now I sit on the board of directors through Berg Bees as well. And then still, of course, trying to uh, na navigate our uh, process to get a community apiary here in Brookline. And what's neat about a community apiary, it's kind of like a community gardening model. Right. So we put these in, Br we put you know, apiaries in different parts of the city and they actually house 20, like the Homewood site has 22 different beekeepers oh, that okay. actually have the opportunity to keep bees in the city of Pittsburgh. So that's kind of neat because it's not just one person and one trick, you know, it's actually like, it's a club that runs it. Um, you know, we teach beekeeping classes. We, you know, provide mentorship for them. Uh, we do the community outreach and stuff. So, you know, for me, I, you know, I have three, uh, three honeybee colonies myself. I'm still within my first year. Um, I have a mentor that's a master beekeeper, um, you know, but with me owning the coffee shop, it's nice because I can really kind of communicate quick. That's so. awesome. I want to thank you for, no thank you for letting me come to your neighborhood and welcoming us so wonderfully. Thank you. And I come, I'm planning to come to your coffee shop. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Enjoy. Right.